Hello and welcome to my channel, Roshan Curie here. And on this beautiful blustery autumnal day, I'm going to show you how I painted some autumn leaves in all their glorious colours. I'm going to make a card today, a really useful thing to have at any time of year, but particularly nice, I think, to capture the autumn leaves in all Okay, I've got these beautiful little autumn leaves. Um, I'm going to make a, a, a card. So I have a card to make for someone. So I've laid them down on the sheet. And I quite like that composition. But it doesn't really matter. What is important, however, is that I... I hope I can find my composition again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split the page in half with a pencil line. And I am going to keep all my leaves and all my bits of drawing to one side. And I can measure it up. Is that more or less? That's not, that's not, that's not perfect. Just that if you don't have your page divided in two, you're going to end up straying over to the other side and you'll end up cutting off something um something nice that you would rather keep so i'm gonna i think that's more or less okay so i'll just keep, make sure to keep a little bit below that line so there's my line and i'm going to i'm going to lay my leaves on now the thing about leaves is and i've done them a lot and I've, i know i've just completely changed my composition that's because i've just remembered i wanted to do the card in the other direction so the thing about leaves is you can try and draw them by eye or you can save a lot of time, a lot of effort, and you can trace around them. So I'm going to use my little pencil here to trace around them. I'm going to hold them down and I'm not trying to get them perfect or anything. What I'm trying to do is get the roughly the shape and the position. So I'm being quite rough and ready about this. This is my long stem. And finally, bring that one up a little bit. Very pretty little maple leaves. And these are all from my back garden. I live out in the countryside, so I always have tons of things that are suitable for drawing, which is just fantastic because there are a few things that I like to draw more than, than nature subjects. Actually, that's what am I saying? I love drawing nature subjects, but I also love drawing urban subjects. Okay, so that's. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to put those to one side and I'm going to try and capture them. So let me just show you the shape. So as you can see, not exactly something amazing, getting bits of water all over the place. Hmm. hope I can clean that off when I'm done. And now I'm going to take my, my Fude pen. So this is my brown ink. There's brown ink in here. And let me just show you what type of brown ink I'm using. This is my brand. It's De Atramentis Document Ink, and the colour I love is brown. And the reason I'm so mad about De Atramentis Ink is because it's waterproof and it never clogs. Okay, I hope I get each leaf from the right thing. Yeah, this is the right leaf. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. And I'm just going to go around. I'm watching my leaf. And it really, really helps to make the outline of the leaf from the actual leaf itself because the most important thing is to get it all symmetrical. And I have found myself that when you draw, when you draw by eye, something that has to be super symmetrical like leaves, as soon as you get it wrong, it starts looking less than brilliant, I think. 
well, I don't know about it, I think, it is less than brilliant. There's a bit of a twirl in this one. A little bit of a bend. Always put the bend in, things like that, if you, if you have them. Okay, so it's going to start there. It's going to end there. So what I'm doing is I want to get those little veins... And it's important that you do those nice and delicately. So I use, and so far as possible, I use the reverse side of my nib. So in case you're not familiar with the foodie pen, do you see the way it's bent? See that bent angle there? Whoop, see that bent angle? So if you hold, if you draw with the reverse, just, you know, like that, you get a super thin line. And if you draw the normal way, you get a much wider line. All right, so let's zoom up a little bit. Oops. So you can see a bit better what I'm doing. Now, are there any little side bits? Yeah, there are. So I'm just going to flick them out. The nice thing about doing leaves like this is that you can get quite free and loose with the paintwork. Hey guys, so what we're going to do is today is these lovely little leaves. So it's for a card and um, I'm going to show you how to do them. I'm just going to show you my paints. So I've got these lovely Roman Schmel paints here. Really, really nice. And this lovely Rosemary Co. paintbrush. And apart from that, just a little pen. Where's my pen gone? So it's just this little pen here. It's a foodie pen by Swan. And let's get into it. So we're going to get all autumnal when it comes to the choosing the browns. I'm just, as you can see, there's little bits of dark as well. It's a beautiful leaf, really gorgeous. So I just went out to my back garden and there are so many different types of leaves out there. So I have lucked out. There are, oh my goodness, there's everything. Well, I know about everything, but we have a little garden. We have a little forest here at home. And uh, we have everything in it. We have, well, I'm not going to list them because I'd be here all day instead of talking about art. All right, so this guy, watch out for your ink, by the way. Give it a couple of seconds to dry. I don't even know what type of this this one is. I am going to ground myself by putting in my little dividing vein. So the little serrated edge here. Also, if you draw your line a little bit quicker, you will find that it stays a little bit thinner. Just getting in. Oh, there's another little bend, bent bit. Can you see the little bent bit here? Do, 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 sorry, it's going off the camera there. So I like those little bent bits. Oops, come here you. The good thing about these leaves is actually they're quite forgiving if you move your subject a little bit. Um, you can get it back into the right position very easily. So for one side of the stem, I draw it really quickly. And it doesn't really matter where it ends up, but the other part of the stem, um, it's important that it's completely parallel. So I draw that really carefully. Little holes, I love little holes in leaves. This one is almost perfectly symmetrical on both sides. Of course you can use black, you can use grey, you can use whatever you like. But I just am very partial to brown. 
few little dark bits at the edges. I should really know my leaves before I start willy-nilly drawing them, I think. Okay, so the next one is this fella here. Or have I done that one? No, that's not that one. This is this one. Right. Ooh, <sighs> very pretty. Very pretty. So let's see. Look at those lovely points. On this side. I don't want to go too close. I don't want to cut off my composition. So you can see that by tracing around the leaf, you get the best of both worlds. You get the, the ability to be free and sort of expressive with your leaf. But you also get the confidence of knowing that everything is in the right place. I, w I can assure you I would have been at this so for so long if I had if I had drawn them freehand. I know because I've done that. It's interesting how the veins go because they all, even the fine ones, they all end up at a point, whether it's a sort of a sub point. I'm just going to draw off the bits of green there. I could use my, my green pen to do that because I probably will be using the green. God, these leaves are just beautiful. What a pleasure to grab them when they really are looking their beautif most beautiful. I'm sure they wouldn't agree. They'd be like, mm, we'd rather be fresh and young and strong and with a whole summer ahead of us. But then wouldn't we all? So this is this little hazel leaf. So hazel is one of the many types of tree that my husband and I have in the back garden. And what the reason we have them well, I guess we built the house maybe, what are we, 2022, maybe 2000, well, we started in 2002, I think, and we didn't move in to the main house, if you like. We lived in a little outhouse in the back. Um, we moved into the main house in 2009. But we were only in that little outhouse, whoops, um, we were only in that little outhouse a couple of weeks back in 2001 when uh, Marcel, that's my husband, he drove all the way down to Cork one Sunday in January, one year, and he went to a fabulous place called Future Forests, which is a great name, and he bought 500 sapling trees. He's a bit extreme, Marcel. He likes to do things with great drama, everything he does. And he came back and in the following two weeks, he planted all 500 and over the years added to them a little bit. And I don't know how many there are, but we didn't really lose any. I wonder why this stem is a little bit offset from my drawing. I guess I just must have been holding it down a different way. It doesn't matter. Because the initial lines I drew were all pencil, so I can I can rub all those out. So I'm quite pleased so far with my. Uh, well, I'm I I'm not I don't know about pleased, but I'm certainly happy you know happy to accept. Let's say put it that way, they're acceptable. My shapes are acceptable, and it's perfect. If you have a card to send to someone. This is the perfect subject because for me it's um it's an it's a sympathy card, but it could just as just as nicely be a, a wedding, couldn't it? I think so, or wedding or 
a birthday or anything like that, anniversary, you name it. Because, you know, like the leaves are very, uh, there we go, isn't that lovely? That's easy enough, isn't it? Um, the leaves are very, uh, what's the word? There aren't, fallen leaves are kind of very, what's the word I'm looking for? They're emblematic of this particular time of year. So you're really marking this time of year. So if it's somebody's birthday, they'll be all thinking, yeah, I was born in autumn and all that kind of thing. And if it's someone's anniversary, actually, that could be my parents. Actually, no, my parents got married a bit earlier than that. Look how I'm waiting for that one. Because you have to make sure the ink is completely dry. And by the way, about rubbing out the pencil line. What is that? Oh, that's okay. You don't have to rub out the pencil line. But once you put paint on top, you can't rub out pencil line anymore. Okay, so let's move that into position and we'll try and keep it there so I don't lose, you don't lose sight of the card because that would be bad. Okay, now I'm going to use my regular set of paints. You'll have to excuse the state they're in. Actually, they're not too bad today. And what I'm going to use in particular, so these are my Roman Schmal watercolours. Um, and they're, Roman is Polish. And his paints are fantastic quality. I just love them. They're artist quality, of course. And here's my Rosemary, my Ore 13, my Rosemary & Co. paintbrush. It's a travel brush. Even though I'm in the studio, I do spend a lot of time traveling, um, painting on the street, if you like. So for me, my brushes are always travel. They're always travel brushes, which means, which means I'm always ready to get up and go which is lovely. All right, first one. I'm going to do this little guy here and I'm looking for kind of a yellowy green. So how, where can I put this that you'll see both? Let me put it down here on the side. And then you can see everything I'm doing. Okay. This is my new uh, Unique You. Unique You tripod. And so far so good. It's quite good. Okay, so, oh gosh, look at that. Now that is super intense. So I just, that was a bit of yellow. And you'll find, you'll notice with me, I don't really, I don't say sort of quinanthrodone or yellow or cadmium yellow or anything like that. What I will say is I want you to use a bright, clean yellow. And I'm just putting in some. If, you, if I work really fast like this, then it'll still be wet and the colors will just fade in. So this is yellow ochre and burnt sienna, and it's far more, it's far wider than, than what's in the leaf, but never mind, I'm not too worried about that. I like the way the color kind of blends in and flows in. And if you put it on when the color is still very wet, you'll get that lovely effect. This here is burnt sienna. By the way, look at the way I'm putting my hand down on the right hand leaf. That I can only do that because I haven't started painting it yet, obviously. Um, once you've started painting it, you can't put your hand in it because you'll smudge it everywhere. So, because I'm right handed, I start painting bits and pieces on the left hand side. So I'm just mixing bits of yellow bits of yellow ochre, the occasional little bit of green just to mix, throw it in. Very nice. Actually, it's turned out a lot easier than I expected. Look, dropping in bits of green, very dilute. There's another bit there, another bit there. And letting the colours hit each other and mix on the actual page. is great now because I, I really need to get this done so it's great to do it and it's uh it doesn't take very long I mean I have to do something in, a, in I don't know about an hour and a half but I'll be well finished by then so there's that one I might come back to it and deepen it up oh what about the stem so you can see with the or 13 whoops hair attached you can see with the or 13 it's um you can do quite skinny little lines as well all right, what about this next one? Okay, this is kind of a peachy color. How am I going to make that one? 
Okay, I'm going to go a bit more burnt sienna in the middle bits. Do a bit of burnt sienna. So it's a bit deeper right in the middle. And it goes a little bit lighter. I'm working quite quickly. But you can stop and start and all the rest of it. If it makes it easier. And there's a lot of green around the edges. So I'm going to, and when I say green, I very, very, very rarely use green unmixed. Um, because I want the green to stay green for a little while, I don't want it to mix immediately with the brown. I'm not letting the green touch the brown just yet. Okay, I've just done it there, but that's okay because that was a bit, that was a bit um, kind of washing into the green anyway, as is that bit. But I'm not, I'm letting the water catch it rather than doing it with my brush so that it ends up being quite, um, quite, quite kind of spontaneous and organic. A little bit of yellow. So as I say, I'm just throwing out the word yellow. I'm not defining it in any way. Um, because, because I'm not that fussy about the particular shade of yellow. The yellow in my paint box is a bright, clean yellow and it's, it's quinanthridone yellow. Other than that, there's a little bit of rig room. I'm just deepening up that there. I may, it's important to put this on while it's still wet. Otherwise that paint won't blend in. That would be, that would be bad. That would be sad. It was, well, it wouldn't be that bad, but it's not the effect I'm going for. I've just added a bit of burnt umber to the corner here. And I'm going to sludge up that green there. So I have to grab a very particular type of green that I absolutely love. This is called Green Appetite Genuine and it's by Daniel Smith. And I'll just bring this up to you here so you can see how we're getting on with the, with the color. So there's kind of a trade off. You can either have the screen really, really close to the subject you're doing, or you can see the whole thing at once. So you could probably, I could probably zoom in on this a little bit. A bit more green. So this is my Green Appetite Genuine and it's a real sludgy green and it's brilliant. It's really gorgeous green. And the reason I like it so much is because It, it, you, you can use it without having to mix it with any other green when you just want to do something very natural. And then this bit's very kind of burnt umbery. There we go. And I'm going to, it does look very dark, but one of the things you, you will very quickly get used to with watercolour is that it, it'll dry, it always dries much lighter than it goes on. One last little bit of brownie orange. A bit more rich yellow there. A bit of rich yellow here. So I feel like I'm being quite, I suppose you could say, artistic in the sense that I'm not being botanical at all about it. Because, but that's not what I'm about in this particular picture. Okay, so there's that one. What about the next one? Oh, this one's nice because this one is just brown. So let's see how it, whoops, there goes my paintbrush. Okay, so next one up is the little, actually, it's, did I say hazel? It's beach. Ooh, look at that. That's very nice. That's absolutely neat. Neat burnt sienna. However, there is a streak of light across the middle. So I'm going to leave that unpainted just for now. And then in a minute, I'm going to soften off the two borders between the white area and the brown area so that it's not too harsh. It's been an almighty night of rain here in Galway. Absolutely crazy. 
I think that people are going to find themselves without power today. Just a real autumn storm, I suppose. And it's very annoying because I went to, I've been trying to capture, ca uh, gather the last of the blackberries. By the way, if I just soften the border across the streak of white and on the same on the other side, then that softens the sheen nicely. I'm going to do something else with it, but I have to wait for it to dry for a minute. I'm just going to bring that up so you can see nice and close. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you can see in the leaf, I'm going to darken. I'm going to darken just one side of each of those little valleys between the between the veins. Let's see if I can do them. I'm going to use the same burnt umber that I that I was using for the rest of the leaf. And may I point out a very good tip, which is I say to my students all the time, try and squint. Try and squint at your subject before painting it. OK, I wait for that to dry a bit and then you'll notice the the lights and the darks will really, really stand out and you won't be too bogged down by detail, which is brilliant. OK, on to my favourite one now. This is just such a beauty. Such a beauty. OK, this one is a kind of a dilute yellow. Is there a little bit of pink in this? I think there is a little bit of pink. Yes, there is. So I've mixed in a tiny little bit of cherry quinacridone red. Had a bit more. Aquarius orange. You'll get very used to my particular palette as time goes on. Just adding little bits wherever I see, perceive it to be a bit darker. Leave that a moment, a moment because I want the border between the nice peachy orangey colour and the green. I want it to be nice and sharp. And if I put that on now, it'll just be more like this one, which is all very well. But I don't want that uh, sludginess in this one here. I want it a bit more, a bit more separate. Now, the last guy, while I'm waiting for that to dry, we have this one here. And just, just go here, put this fella down. Very important to deepen up the colours if you can, just at the very outer edges. As you can see, I put it on so wet. There we go. So this is my very first instructional video, proper instructional video on YouTube. And I really hope that you find it's useful and please don't hesitate from making suggestions and commenting. OK, let's leave that guy to dry off a little bit because I'm here to try and make your sketching journey just that little bit more fruitful. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard my podcast, which is called Sketch Therapist. But I take my role as a sketch therapist very seriously. I do. Um, because I, oops, you see, look, that's what I didn't want to happen. Now, when you do a little run like that, you can do two things. You can ignore it or you can lift it. I'm going to ignore it because I'm not, you know what I'll do while I'm waiting? I'll just, I'll just accept that I've got one blob there. And what I'll do while I'm waiting, I'll go back to this first guy and what I'll do is I'm going to deepen up some of the bits of brown on the very, very outer rims. And I can circle around those little holes. A little bit under that little bend. I don't want to do it too much, though, because I, I like the way it was very, very free and... Um, you know, a little bit, I'm not going to say abstract, but kind of like a little bit less than botanical. But I'm not interested in, in making botanical representations. It's a beautiful art, but it's for others. It's not for me. Because I like to be a bit, I like to be a bit playful and a bit messy. Um, and I can see there's a whole big Zen thing going on with reproducing 
botanical subjects to the letter and it's it is a beautiful thing make this a little bit deeper down here it's a beautiful thing but as i say it's not my particular thing okay clean the brush so when i clean my brush i make sure to give it a good old sluice around and then i wipe it thoroughly on the edge of the jar and in that way it becomes like a kind of a mop Okay, well, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, okay, now, next thing. I am going to do the shadow around my maple leaf at the top here. Sorry, that whole section was off camera. I do apologise. I do apologise. Okay, I'll, I'll get used to it. I'll get used to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop on. Try not to let my paints grey run into my greens. So when you're making a nice shadow, I've got lights coming in two directions. But I, you know what I sometimes do actually? I flick off one of my lights when it comes to doing the shadows so that I only have it in one direction. But I think I'm going to keep the both both of my lights on. So this is Payne's Grey. And you usually find that one light is casting a softer light than the other. So I'm just going to wipe most of that off. And on it goes. And then we've got a very soft one on this side. So it's much more dilute than the other side. You can see that. A little bit here. See, normally you, you wouldn't have light. If you've only got one direction of light, then you'll only have shadows on one side. But because I have two, I am putting shadows on both sides. I may live to regret it, but I really can't be bothered standing up and turning off my other lights. So there you go. They're there for good. Okay, so I think that's pretty much that for that one. Look at what I'm doing here is totally verboten. Do not do that. Do not add bits of paint when you're when you've already added some and it's started to dry. All right, so what about this one here? Very nice little leaf. Ooh. So this one, because it's curled up, it's quite a long way from the table so it's got quite a big shadow don't want to leave that too long if you leave your shadow too long especially if it's paints gray you're going to end up with an outline and if you have an outline it will stop being believable as a shadow so don't let those lines draw and sometimes you can wash the color out if you're not ready to do whatever you have to do with your shadow okay now that should mix into each other nicely and for the other side very dilute that's even that's a bit strong I don't want to mix that with the green stem okay so while I'm waiting for that top leaf to dry and for um, what else, whatever stuff to go on, I'm going to fill in the bit I was waiting for to dry because it's dry enough now to add bits of green around the edges. So this is sap green with a little bit of that nice bright yellow I mentioned. And it's a little bit darker green at the tips, which I'll do once again, waiting for it to dry. Just careful, careful. If I'm overlapping anything, I don't want anything to run. Bits of sludgy green on this side. A bit of brown in the fold over bit. Here we go. Hmm, that one went quite running into the leaf never mind so what i can do is when that's dried off a little bit i can 
sludge up the corners, the little tips, those sweet little points. Um, and that will look kind of effective. Meanwhile, I'm just going to pop a few of those tiny little spots of whatever they are. Remembering that your watercolour always dries much lighter than it goes on. And if I get lost, if I get lost in the shapes, I just squint and all of a sudden the shapes start jumping out at me. Um, and it's just a really, really handy little little tip. I can't remember where I read it first. It must have been years ago. It's a little bit of yellow. And you know what? There is actually a little border of yellow between the green and the brown. There we go. On both sides. So wait for that to dry now. And while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm going to put the shadow in on our top friend here. Oh, didn't I say I was going to deepen up? Yes, I am. I'm going to deepen up some of the some of the little bits along here. So hopefully it's dry enough to take it without lifting. One of the risks you run by adding more paint to not quite dry paint is that you can you can lift it with your you can if you add more paint it can just turn around and lift the paint you've gone to all the trouble to to add which is really annoying okay so there we go and I'm going to just wash my brush thoroughly give it a severe wiping and then just run the brush down the border so that it isn't too unrealistic looking there we go now okay I'm happy enough with that one what about my my water has now gone very dirty um, so I might struggle to get nice clean water, but let's try anyway. So back to the top one and let's put on the shadow. Whoops, look at that, that's because that's wet. Okay, I'm going to leave it because I could just damp it off with the tissue, but I'm going to leave it because I don't want, I don't like the texture that, that um, a blotted page gives. It, there's nothing that says watercolour about it. And I'm not worried about putting shadows on top of other shadows, as long as they've got nice, um, crisp borders. There we go. There's my little border. It doesn't matter if they're overlapping, it doesn't matter at all. And then we've got a little bit here. Whoops, I think that's going to go into the other side of the card, isn't it? Move this down a bit. Um, all right, we'll leave that for, I could put a shadow in caused by the inside curl of the leaf, but I don't think I'll bother. All right, back to my friend down here and I'm going to put the shadow of this leaf here. little bend at the bottom tells you that you're just reaching the end even if it's off a bit off the scene now remember what I said about do not let those edges dry okay I've mixed a bit of blue green in with the shadow with the shadow but never mind now I'm going to try and keep that shadow nice and pointy because it looks good when it's pointy it emphasizes the pointing pointiness of the leaf shape. Having said that, don't forget, I'm going to be deepening up those points a lot when they're completely dry. There's another one. And lastly, I'm going to dilute that down a tiny bit. So just the merest poke into the water will dilute your, your paint. You don't wash it off or anything. Um, and then we've got a second shadow on this side, make it nice and dilute. My water has gone very green. And this is all off the center of the card, so that doesn't matter. Okay, finally, I don't know why I didn't paint the outer rim of this last little one here but that's fine do it now a little bit 
bit of a rip in that one. But I hope you'll agree that the shadows make a lot of difference. They kind of suddenly make it look realistic. And you can see how quick this was. So it's if you have a birthday card or an anniversary card or a sympathy card or whatever it is that you have that you'd really like to, to send to someone. This is not going to take a massive amount of time. And because you've traced around the leaves to begin with, you're far, far more likely to make a good job of the whole, I think. Um, now, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. While I wait for that to dry, because if I put the shadow under that, what am I going to do? I am going to end up catching the shadow. That was the noise of me putting on some lovely paint onto my palette. Just a little blob. I need to fill up a little um, half pan with it, actually, so that I always... Whoops. Oh, I hate when I do that. Look, I've gone outside the delicate line. I wonder, is it worth cleaning off? try this is very risky don't try this at home folks what i'm doing is i'm adding extra dilute water okay i managed it I, if you add loads of <coughs> excuse me water to the blob you want to remove and then just keep adding more until you can't dilute it anymore and then you can blob it off with the tissue. But it is definitely high risk, high risk strategy. That's much better now because I like those little tips really defined and standing out. So I feel these leaves have been honoured for their beauty. And really, as I say, very, very quick not very time consuming really at all and a great pleasure of course we won't uh, forget to mention that now i can't put this on this particular leaf because it needs to be on a white background so we've got this leaf here and i'm going to try and this is going to be a strange one okay i can just about make out the shape of the leaf Something like this. Doesn't have to, you can get away with a lot actually in terms of the shadow. Just chasing the the dark bit of the shadow down to the bottom. There we go. That'll have to do. I don't think I needed that much actually. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Don't think I have much more to do. So you can see it there. There's my little painting of leaves. And when it's completely dry, I'll just make a slit down the middle with a very, very lightly scored with a with a with a, a, a plastic ruler or a knife or something. And uh, that's my card. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, absolutely. Please feel free to have your say. <laughs>